Nice. Hey YouTubers, Grimmy Dragon here, and it's time for another review. And this time we are going to be taking a look at Takara Tomy's Unite Warriors Defensor. We're going to start off with the packaging this time. And I know that's kind of rare, but this is kind of a special case. Because unlike the um, Hasbro Combiner War series, the United Warriors are actually sold by the Combiners in the gift set, much like the uh, Takara gift sets of old. So, got this nice artwork of Defensor on the box, with the usual um, Transformers on the side, Unite Warriors at the bottom, name of the figure at the bottom, pretty standard stuff. Nothing to really speak of at the size or top, but on the back, you do have the nice product shock with Defensor in the very middle, and the various components on the sides, including Groove, who is the new mold of the set. And you also have the little advertisement that all the limbs can be swapped around if you decide to. Now, flipping this uh, little panel up, which is actually on a magnet that's pretty strong. You can actually get a good view of the Protectobots inside in this really lovely bubble. And that is awesome looking. And on the top you got another view of Defensor, the Protectobots, and his tech specs. But, that's enough for the box itself. Time to crack this thing open and see what we got. Okay, so let's get the uh, elephant out of the room and start with Groove here. Because, uh, A, if you bought this set, you probably bought it for this particular figure. And B, the rest of this review is probably going to be just comparisons between the paint jobs. So, let's get an actual review in it. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, Groove is a motorcycle. Big surprise. But he's also a deluxe class motorcycle, which means he is big. And if you're wondering why Hasbro decided to make Groove a Legends class and put in Rook, well, part of it is scale. I think the main reason is scale, actually. Because Groove is big. And I mean big. I mean bigger than the other Protectobots, save for Hotspot. Yeah, Groove kind of towers over his teammates in vehicle mode. I'm not sure if he uses more plastic than the other guys, but he is a lot bigger. Which makes him look very odd next to the other guys. So I can see why Hasbro was a little iffy about putting together a team of the original five with a deluxe sized motorcycle. RC had the same problem in Prime where her little Legion class figure looked a little bit better in vehicle mode than the deluxe. And I think any motorcycle toy is going to have the same pro um, problem except for wreck car since Junkions are known for riding each other. And he was actually meant to be ridden by Cybertronians, so big works. Okay, talking about that is over, so we can get on to the next topic. Well, before we do, let's get the comparison in with Legends Groove. 
as you can see big difference in size will bring streetwise back in see th these two kind of go better in vehicle mode I won't deny it I wanted the deluxe motorcycle guy crew but yeah I can see why this one would be considered uh, better for scale sake okay just getting it out there But in any case, there are some advantages to a deluxe size motorcycle. And reasons to more reasons to hope for a uh, afterburner repaint of this mold. Including the fact that GI Joe figures can actually ride groove with some mud as I say that as she falls over can ride groove with moderate comfort and yeah I probably should take more time trying to get her on there but you get the point yeah, she's a good scale for G.I. Joe figures, which is a, a nice touch. But aside from that, paint job is very nice, very crisp colors, a little bit of visible hand syndrome. Unfortunate, but eh, what can you do? I mean... Everything else looks good. You got the uh, painted hubcaps or spokes. You got a nice police logo on the back. Got some translucent uh, siren lights and a nice translucent, somewhat sparkly uh, windshield with a cool Autobot symbol right on there. So, yeah, he's a well painted and well decoed figure. Well, well decoed motorcycle. Groove's robot mode is actually pretty uh, nice looking. Uh, for the colors, it's got a nice mix of gold, silver, and uh, white, with a little bit of black and red for highlights. Well, red on the uh, on the guns at least, but uh, yeah, gold, silver, black, and white. It's a pretty nice color scheme for them. I mean, I don't know, it looks pretty good. Head sculpt is done fairly well. He's actually the only Combiner War figure that I know of that has light piping. Making him very unique. And possibly prone to making certain reviewers nervous because his back of the head is entirely translucent plastic meaning if not taken good care of it will snap apart and break because that's how translucent plastic works but still it's a nice head sculpt and his proportions are done pretty well um, and his articulation is pretty good too. He's got a ball joint in the head, so he can do a little bit. He can look left and right, look up and down just a little bit. He's got ball joints in the shoulders, forward, backward, in and out, like forward, back, in and out. He can go up a little higher due to the transformation joint, which is ratcheted and very stiff. Um, got a waist. Oh yeah, forgot. He has bicep swivels, 90 degree bends at the elbows. Like I said, he has a waist. Um, ball jointed hips, thigh swivel. That's very stiff. The ball joint tends to go first. 
and 90 degree bend at the knees. Um, nothing at the feet, but they are molded specifically for a more natural stance. So, yeah, it works out pretty good. And his, his accessories are two nice gunmetal painted pistols made entirely of translucent plastic so they can get that little light bar effect on the top. Maybe gunmetal plastic with uh, flat red lights would have been better, but oh well, it works. So, he is a very nice figure and um, is a fairly good size. Uh, if you get him with the other deluxes of the uh, set, You can see he stands pretty even with the guys. So all the protective bots have a pretty standard size to them. And when you put him next to his Legends counterpart, you can see a good difference in the size there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting. And I do like the new roof. I think it's a great mold. It will look great as Afterburner if they decide to go that route. I'm pretty certain they will. But, uh... Yeah, it's a good figure. And for one last comparison, let's get him with the uh, guy who we got in the States, uh, Rook. And yeah, Rook looks a little bulkier in this form. Um, but it's hard to say which one uses the more plastic if there is a difference in that respect. Still... Rook is a real, uh, not Rook, um, Groove is a really good figure. Now paint job wise, I'd say Blades is the weakest of the bunch. Um, just because of the way the uh, red and white are colliding with each other. Now this is pretty much just to reference the G1 toy, which was red on the top and white at the bottom. But the way it is executed, it, it just feels kind of sloppy. Like the uh, fact that this whole white area is kind of just goes from red to this big block of white that follows the panel lining. I mean, that's what really bugs me about the way they interact. It follows the panel lining for the transformation parts. I mean, with the exception of this little bit at the side. I mean, the rest, like from here at the hinge, all those borders are different pieces. Same in the back. I mean, the borders actually reflect the transformation parts, which is a bit of a downer. I mean, I'd say this is the weak link of the bunch. Especially when you bring in the uh, Hasbro version, which put the white in, but actually did it as a stripe instead of uh, a bunch of blocks and blotches. So, and I also really like that um, Autobot rescue symbol on the back. I thought that was a really nice touch. I mean, this one has features I like. I like the fact that they put, uh, like, gunmetal gray on the warheads for the missiles. 
or the foam rescue missiles there. Uh, I'm sorry. You know, I kind of like the fact, well, they got both got that on there, so. I mean, honestly, out of all the Protective Bots, Blades is the one that I would be the first to say the Hasbro version is the better version of the two. The others, I, I kind of go for the Takara version over them, and even if it is close. But Blades, yeah, I mean, for vehicle mode, this looks better. Now, I'll be honest, uh, Blades does look a lot better in robot mode than he does in vehicle mode. I mean, the simple red and white color scheme works well for him. It's pretty good for an aerial bot or a protective bot, which, you know, we know Blades is a protective bot. But, you know, it only goes so far. I mean, I do like the white arms. With, like I said, the uh, foam missiles having the tips on the warheads in gray. I thought that was a good touch. But when we compare them to the Hasbro version, okay, I like the arms here better. But the rest seems to work better for the Hasbro version of Blades. Yeah, I like how the silver kind of flows together on the red. Uh, and, you know, my opinions on the vehicle mode pretty much carry over because it still kind of shows. Although, yeah, back looks all white now. So it's, that helps, I guess. But still, again, this feels like the weakest of the protective bots. Hat. Okay, so first aid here is pretty nice looking. Um, definitely a lot more white on the vehicle mode than the uh, Combiner Wars version. Uh, you got this little red stripe that says emergency on it. Right here is done pretty well. You actually have painted rims. Definite improvement there. Gotta love those hubcaps. Painted back windshield, like a back uh, window. Still no lights, but a window is painted. That's good. Uh, got a little symbol on the side. I'm guessing a medical symbol. And you got two Autobot logos here. You got one on the back and one on the hood. Kind of referencing the G1 toy a bit. But comparing him to, uh, okay here. But comparing him to the Hasbro version of First Aid, you can see there is a significant difference. right on the side where they have the uh, more emphasized red where it says rescue and emergency on the back and you know between the sides the hubcaps the position of the uh, hood Autobot logo and the fact that for, like Hasbro's first day doesn't have one on the back And the fact that this one's not painted. You know, there isn't much else deco-wise uh, as far as differences go. I mean, the blue's a little lighter for the windshields, but that's about it. Um, but honestly, between the two, I would take the has like the Takara version a little bit more than I would the uh, Hasbro version. I think the Takara one is a bit better. First stage robot mode is quite nice looking, really. Um, 
The chest piece seems to use a little less paint than what the Hasbro version does. Which is a little surprising, but um, given the amount of apps all around, I think it balances out pretty well. Um, you got, instead of just being solid silver in here, you got these uh, little details on there. And a couple little details below on the chest, which really comes out nicely. I mean, the head paint job is pretty much the same, just a lighter shade of blue for the eyes, which does help them pop quite a bit. Uh, there's a white plastic instead of red on the uh, upper arms, and there's a little bit of silver paint on the forearms. Kind of helps. And on the legs, you got this nice bit of silver detail. And the Autobot symbol on the left leg. Again, um, referencing the G1 toy. Um, when compared to the Hasbro version, the differences are very few. But, honestly, I do think that the Takara one's more detail-oriented than the Hasbro version. But it is a very close call to make, so whichever one you like best. Streetwise's paint job would be considered basic by most, but it also gives a feeling of less is more. Because you got a nice uh, gray car with some police logos on the side, a decent light bar. Painted hubcaps, always good. Painted hubcaps are good and should be mandatory. Just saying. But you got the bumper, the guard, and you know, still no painted headlight, I mean tail lights, which is sad. You usually expect that from Takara, but like you expect them to paint it on Takaras, but you know. The colors match pretty well, and honestly, this is the only one of the entire dead end uh, streetwise mold that actually doesn't have a paint problem on this piece right here. It blends in perfectly. That's a first. Yeah, that is a definite first. You got a nice Autobot symbol there. All in all, it looks good. It's uh, simple, but it is effective. Hasbro Streetwise, on the other hand, um, does have a little bit more blue on the front, but none in the back. Again, a little impeded by this uh, piece right here, because you can see the blue stripe stro um, stops abruptly right here, right at that piece, which is a supposedly unpaintable plastic, but I don't know exactly how true that is. I mean, it looks pretty much the same as the other parts. But um, I, I like the blue on Hasbro Streetwise. I do. If it continued all the way through, I think it would be another case where I think the Hasbro one has an advantage. But uh, half a paint job doesn't quite cut it. So I gotta give it to um, Takara's in this case. Streetwise, again, a very simple and elegant paint scheme. And it does a good job of bringing out the character. And really does work for him. In, I like the way that the uh, chest is kind of reminiscent of Combiner Wars Prowl. And the rest of them just seems to uh, blend well. I mean, I like the fact that they only painted one of the 
little vent things uh, just to look like kneecaps. Thought that was a nice touch. A little bit of red at the feet is good. And you know, those are pretty much the only paint apps he has on him, save for the head, which is exactly the same as uh, the Combined Awards version. Uh, speaking of, here he is. Um, and uh, as you can see, kind of looks like the Hasbro version has mo more going on with the uh, colors. The red plastic on the combiner peg and uh, the hip piece well, is uh, pretty noticeable. The different colors in the uh, thighs. And those uh, red forearms really do help them pop a little more but again I'd like Takara's simple design a little bit better now Hotspot is pretty interesting because while his paint job is con is quite different from the Hasbro version that doesn't mean it's better. I mean, I'd say it's pretty even, ultimately. Um, there are things that I like on both versions that really put them on even terms with each other. But what I do like about the Takara version is that they painted the uh, front bucket silver, which is really nice. And the back here, instead of being all black, it's actually blue plastic painted black at some points, which uh, makes it a little more interesting. Of course, I love the painted hubcaps, okay? If you haven't noticed, I really like painted hubcaps. And of course, you got a whole Hotspot's little logo on the side at the front with a nice Autobot symbol back there. Painted light bar. You know, everything else is pretty standard stuff. Now, if we bring in Hasbro's um, hotspot, you can see the Hasbro version is a much lighter blue, much more of a powder blue than um, Takara's version, which is a lot more bold. Now, I do like the darker blue on the Takara hot, hot spot. I do like the fact that the windows are painted, well, these vents are painted like windows, and they're not here. But I do like that little red stripe. And I also like the fire rescue with the hot spot logo right here on the back, because that is a nice looking deco as well. So, I mean, this is a really close race here between these two, which one's better and not better. I mean, I'd say the Takara one has a slight advantage here, but again, it's not a drastic advantage. Now, while the Lesson is More approach works great for street-wise, I can't say it's a guaranteed hit for Hotspot. Um, again, his paint scheme seems a little more simplified in robot mode, although it does pick out some really nice details, like the uh, that little bit of mech work in the shoulders, the forearms, and the springs on along the forearms as well. Although, I'm not fond of the fact that they skipped out on the... Uh, details in the shoulders and some in the chest and along the thighs. I like that part of uh, Combiner Wars Hotspot quite a bit. It's nice that they picked out the silver fuel tanks but you know the black crotch doesn't really speak to me too much. Uh, probably shouldn't. And it does look like it's um, very fluid pants. So, I don't know, maybe that does work. 
but what really kind of bugs me is that he's kind of lacking an Autobot symbol in robot mode. Like the ones from his vehicle mode are the inside of his uh, shins, which makes it kind of hard to view them. But luckily, Rafael labels can fix that, and they probably will very shortly. But for a quick comparison, yeah, there's the uh, Combiner Wars hotspot again, much lighter blue on the Hasbro version. And yeah, this is a real solid case of features I like on one that I wish were on the other. Because, man, this is just crazy. I mean, I like the fact that there's a blue stripe running in the middle of hot, like the Takara Hotspot's chest. Although I would love to have an Autobot symbol. I really like these uh, striped red and silver stripes on Takara's hotspot, uh, which they were picked out in, well, on Hasbro's hotspot, I'm sorry. And I wish Takara's hotspot picked them out as well. So this is quite a case of they both have really good points, but they neither one really has everything I want out of the mold. And it's crazy. But yeah, it's a tie between the two. Okay, now that we got Defensor all put together, he looks really good. I mean, again, it's uh, much like with the hotspot. It's a matter of a lot of things I'd like, a lot of things I liked on Hasbro's Defensor that I wish were here. And uh, I will say, this is the one mode where I kind of like the white on blades because it really does help make them look a little bit more... Uh, symmetrical in a color scheme although the gray kind of breaks that up <laughs> yeah but yeah the white forearm here white forearm here it kind of goes together so it's a nice blend there uh, there's definitely more blue on this particular defense or than what the combiner wars one had which is okay Okay. I kind of like how the uh, details here are kind of picked out with black hair and the silver right below. Although I kind of miss the uh, silver and red detail below. And the details that were right here on the thighs. Still, it's not a bad looking mode. I think it's a pretty good one. I mean, the silver from the bucket looks good on the shoulders. A little bit better than the black from the uh, Ezra version. And Groove does make a really good leg. But bringing in the Hasbro version, Yeah, I mean, there is a considerable difference here. I mean, again, these bits here, the red and silver, I really liked on the Combiner Wars Hotspot and Defensor. And I really wish they carried over to the Takara version, but aside from that, I really do think the Takara version kind of pops out better as far as the combined form goes. And all in all it works out pretty well. Do wish there was an Autobot symbol on the main body for Defensor. Even though there's only a really really tiny one on the Hasbro version. It's better than nothing. Still 
really good either way. I mean, I'd say this is the better version, but, you know, this one is still really good. Now, uh, last but not least, uh, the Legends Groove, which can fit on this guy just as easily. We'll just pop him here first, because we can do that. As you can see, it looks fine on the Unite Warriors Defensor. And fun fact, the collector coin that comes with certain versions of Defensor is in a casing that is designed after Groove here. Which is pretty, pretty weird and pretty awesome at the same time. But yeah, it's a nice little coin. Real shiny, got Defensor's head on it. And the chest piece looks like Combiner Wars Defensor's chest. <laughs> Again, I don't know why, but... Yeah, they decided to go with the Hasbro version for the uh, coin case. And another one, back of the instructions has this really cool artwork of the protective bots playing baseball. And the uh, box art, just so you know. But yeah, Defensor is a pretty good one. If you want the Deluxe Groove, he's worth it to go for that. I mean, there's a lot more to it than just the bike. I mean, the other ones have a really good paint job to them. It makes it worthwhile. Okay, so that should pretty much wrap it up for Unite Warriors Defensor. Definitely one that's made for G1ers and uh, people who love the uh, Takara paint jobs. But as far as a budget transformer, yeah, it's a bit expensive. So um, choose wisely if you want to go for it. Honestly, if you're okay with uh, Rook, the Combiner Wars Defensor is just fine. Um, this is more for people who want a G1 accurate set and uh, want a nice paint job. That said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, um, you know, usual stuff. And tune in next time as we take another trip to Eternia to look at the new Club Grayskull He-Man from um, the Filmation cartoon, of all things. Anyway, I'll see you next week, so goodbye out there whatever you are. <laughs>